Hey everybody, Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're going to take a look at the Wharfdale Diamond 225. It's Diamond Series from a couple of years ago. I think they're discontinued, but they're heavily discounted now, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, the Diamond 225. Sit back, relax, and we're going to talk about this little speaker. Old Guy Hi-Fi, we tune in. Wisdom lives in every spin. Soundtracks guide the way Golden moments day by day by day So the Wharfdale Diamond 225 is an entry-level speaker from Wharfdale. Now this particular 200 series lineup is being discontinued, so these are available on closeout at an aggressive price. I think the original price for these was about $400 or $450. Music Direct has them in stock in, in various finishes for $299, and I can that would be a great buy, and it's got me tempted. Um, the, two, the Diamond 225 is a remarkable speaker. Most Worthdale speakers are. I think their build quality is as good as speakers costing many times more than their price. Um, for instance, the cabinet on this is absolutely inert, and I really, really like the build quality of that. Um, they use a, a, a laminate of uh, particle board and MDF with a material called crystal lam in between that then makes a non-resonant panel. So it's exceptional and very, very good, and I, I really like the way it's built. And hopefully, bad say way, hopefully you like the video and you'll consider giving me a like and a subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate that. And if you want to support the video, there's options to do that. There's a membership link in the pinned comment and in the description. And of course, there's a thank you button if you want. So again, with that very inert cabinet, there's no cabinet resonances on this. And then you combine that with the design of the speaker. And I'll get to that in just a second. But it is a ported speaker. Now, it's a little bit difficult to see. This slot goes all the way around 360 degrees around the speaker, and it is the port fires down into that slot and then radiates the base out in all directions. So one of the nice things is because the energy is not all focused on the rear, like a rear ported speaker, you can put this pretty close to a wall and it will give you a little base enhancement. And actually, it's very satisfying. Or you can pull it out into the room and it still does a good job with base. They claim the Frequency response on it, 3 dB down is 45 hertz to 20,000, and then they say an in-room, 10 dB down of 40 hertz. I'll give them an honest 45. Um, it sounds good. The bass is very articulate. And it does that in a, in a really unique way. It uses a woven carbon fiber woofer that has an embossed pattern on it that then helps break up you know, any kind of resonances on the surface of the cone. And then it uses a, I don't know if it's butyl rubber, but it uses a rubber surround that then can help dampen the edge breakup of the cone, but also give it a good excursion so it can move a lot of air. And that gives it a really good base response. So that's why I said I'll give it the legitimate 45. The tweeter is a one inch soft dome in a waveguide, and it's kind of a unique waveguide. Very smooth, very detailed, nice extension, honestly out to 20,000 without any problem. So really good performance that way. Um, it crosses over at 2300 hertz. It is um, 87 dB efficiency. They recommend an amplifier from 25 to 100 watts. It is 8 ohm nominal, but drip, dips to 4.2. So really any uh, good stereo amplifier will be able to drive it. I'm not sure I'd want to drive five of these on an AVR, but uh, on a regular stereo amp or just in two channel, I don't think any amp's going to have any trouble with it at all. It is really nice size. And again, at the, I was talking, the crossover is at 2300 hertz. I couldn't detect any anomalies between the handoff from the, the midwoofer to the tweeter. And a lot of times what will happen is as a woofer goes up in frequency, it starts to ring. There's stored energy there that then manifests itself as a distortion. I couldn't detect any of that between the woofer and the tweeter at all. It was a seamless, flawless handoff from one to the other. And I'm very sensitive in that range of two kilohertz to four kilohertz. For me, that's where fatigue lives and that's where brightness lives. Not high, but brightness lives in that two to four, maybe five kilohertz range. And these exhib exhibited none of that. So that was really, really good. So great build quality, good, excellent driver quality, great integration of the drivers, uh, very handsome cabinet. How did I play with it? Well, I threw a lot of things at it. <coughs> Excuse me. First off, I started out with the AXR100 from Cambridge Audio, and that sounded really good with this. The AXR100 is a very smooth 
and well-detailed amplifier to begin with, especially, and it's very price uh, appropriate for a product like this. It was a great sound, great image, great bass. The AXR100 does a really good job with that. But between the smoothness of this, and it is smooth, and the smoothness of that, I felt maybe like there could have been a bit more detail in the mid-range. I mean, I, it wasn't glaringly obvious, and I didn't, I had to really focus on it to think about it. Just If I just sit and listen, it was very satisfying, so no problem there. Then I had it um, running off the Cambridge CXA 81 Mark II, and that's got a little more drive in the mid-range. Um, it's still very detailed and smooth sounding, but a little, just a little, much, little bit more drive in there. And of course, that has a very big power supply, so the bass is just a little bit tighter and maybe a little better defined than the AXR100. It's still really satisfying. And, and again, that top end on both, and it's a characteristic, I think, of Cambridge, and I think it's a characteristic of the Wharfdale House sound, is that the high frequencies are just smooth and detailed and just really well presented. And you pair it with that kind of classic British sound of the Wharfdale and that classic British sound of Cambridge products, and you got a really good marriage there. And then I ran it off the Cambridge Evo 150, and that's a Class D amp, and that that is a surprising amp for me. That's the amp that made me rethink my kind of disdain for Class D amplifiers. I love that thing, it's my daily driver now. And the combination of that with this, that's 150 watts a channel, it's got good power, it's got great drive to it, the, the bass attack is fast, and this speaker responded great to that. Um, and again, on the because the Class D on the Evo 150, the highs are a little bit more energetic, but this sounded really good, it never got fatiguing, I never heard any ringing, I never heard any aggressiveness in the upper mid-range and into the treble range. It was a great combination. And then I paired it up with the Galleon, Thomas and Stereo's TSA 75, using a Gemini, a Sparkos Gemini balanced headphone amp preamp uh, with a tube in it. And I think I'm running a 12BH7 in there right now, and that was a very good combination. And that amplifier is, I think, far more powerful than Thomas uh, hints at. It's a great, it was a great combination, good drive, good detail. That's a little cooler presentation than the Cambridge products, but it was still very satisfying. Great bass and amplifier's got a lot of drive to it. It was great bass, very good detailed mid-range, very good extended and well-detailed top end. Um, and then I played it with a new amp I've got in, and this is the last couple nights I've been listening to it, um, is the Advanced Audio XI-75 integrated amplifier, 75, 75 watt integrated amplifier with a high bias switch on it. So it's basically running class A. That was a great combination. That's a great amplifier. Please look forward to that re review. It is quite good. Um, anyway, so those are all great. And actually the gentleman who loaned me these also loaned me the Adcom, the vintage Adcom stack, which I did a review on, you may see before or after this, because I upload them out of sequence sometimes. And I put it together with that, and that sounded wonderful as well. So the Wharfdale sound to me, the house sound for Wharfdale is good, strong, and it, even in the bookshelf speakers, a good, strong, authoritative bass with good detail and good definition, not boomy but good definition and good detail in it. And a great mid bass, fast attack. It sounds precise. It's sound rim shots and bass kick drums and everything just sound exactly like they should. And then when you get into the mid range, it's got this smoothness to it and it, maybe a little warmth. And it depends on the pairing of the amplifiers. Like I said, the AXR100, which lends to, tends to be warm anyway. And with this smooth, might have been a little too smooth, but God, it was satisfying. It was so nice to listen to. But so a, a very smooth, detailed mid-range, excellent vocal reproduction, excellent um, sound as far as, I was listening to this recording um, called Kansas City Monarch, and it's a jazz recording, and you can tell by listening to the recording, and I'll link to it in the description, that all of the, the um, musicians were in the same room at the same time recording that. It wasn't like modern recordings where the bass drummer comes in on Tuesday and the singer comes in on Wednesday and the guitar player comes in on Thursday and then they mash it all together, or they're recording in their own sound booths and no one's playing together. This, you can tell they're playing together. And this did a great job of giving me that room sense, that air sense. Um, and that's a, a lot in the upper mid range. And again, into the treble region, which is just smooth and so detailed. Now, another thing that can get, especially with uh, a two-way speaker, is on massed strings, like this recording from Herbert von Karajan 
when you have all the violins and all the violas and all of the cellos and all of the, the string basses playing at the same times and then add in some horns, it can sound congested. I mean, it can sound like, you know, a, a, about as uh, organized as a sack full of bear cubs. So with the, with a lot of uh, speakers, that because that a lot of that exists right around that crossover range, it just gets congested and you can't really even pick out a particular section of instruments. This is the violins, the violas, the cellos, etc. With this one, you could you could tell where the, the the you know where they sit: violins, cellos, violas, bass in the back of the violas. You could hear that, and at certain points, depending on the, the content of the music and the, obviously the the score, you could pick out: oh, that's the first violin. Oh, I can hear the primary bass player. So really good detail that way. And again, on the top end, smooth. Symbol crashes were ac absolutely accurate. Um, there was no sibilance at all. Um, if there was sibilance in the recording, you got it. Um, if the recording was bad, you know what? This can kind of band-aid that. If the recording was excellent, this will let it shine. So I can't say enough good things about, especially about a little bookshelf speaker for $300 a pair. This is a steal, an absolute steal. And I'm not lying to you. I am really tempted to get a pair. Um, I just have so much stuff here right now. Maybe someday, I don't know. But highly recommended, the Wharfdale Diamond 225. It's a great speaker and it's great on a stand. And you can, like I said, you can put it close to wall boundaries without any trouble whatsoever. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video on the 225. And if you did, I would very much appreciate a like and a subscribe. And if you wish to support the channel, there is a way to uh, join the channel. There's a membership link in the pinned comment and also in the video description. There will be links to the artists I mentioned here in the recording um, in the description of the video. There are also affiliate links um, and you know how those work. And also my playlist. Now I've added some reference playlists. Some of the playlists I use right now, I think the only ones that are in there and hopefully by the time I upload this and re reconfigure the description, I'll add some playlists from Kobuz and Spotify of tracks that I use when I'm evaluating uh, a product, whether it's an amp, a speaker, whatever. Um, and maybe that will give you some insight into kind of, give you a hint at kind of what I'm listening for because a particular type of music will have a particular characteristic to it. Like I do listen to some techno or, you know, like Dead Mouse um, because it's got great bass and great drive. Now, it's not deep bass, but it is authoritative bass. I do listen sometimes to opera music because then it gives me the, especially female opera music, it gives me that upper registers in the upper mid range, upper mid range, lower up in the up in the mid range area and low in the upper mid range area where you get that authority and you can, if there's sibilance or if there's some sort of um, stored energy in the, in the drivers right at that crossover range, you'll hear it right away with that. So anyway, those playlists are there. I can't tell you how grateful I am that you give me time to watch my videos. While I'm filming this right now, we are within centimeters of hitting 5,000 subscribers. And I thank you so very much. This has been such a fun adventure and the adventure is going to continue. I've enjoyed it a great deal. Um, I'm having a ball and who wouldn't? I get to play with all kinds of really cool gear. And there's a lot of stuff over there that you can't see that I'm really not going to talk about until I get the reviews done. I'll tease them maybe in a short, but again, I can't thank you enough. I appreciate all your support. Um, I just, it's been a wonderful adventure for me and a very, very rewarding one. And so I can't say thank you enough. I'm Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi Network channel. And now it's time for you to go listen to music, maybe on a really accurate, cool, smooth sounding bookshelf speaker. Thanks so very much. Have a great day.